I know some of you have forgotten to read the word this week. My wife always says, thank you, uh, that you are just reading the word. Sometimes it's good to read the word. <laughs> One minute. So, um, yeah, so Jesus, uh, you know, stood most of the time in the synagogue and read the word. So it's good. It's edifying. God's word is edifying and it's powerful. So we read the word and also I will give you some explanation. So today uh, we're going to turn to the book of Revelations. Okay, so... I'm not going to spend too much time, but I'm going to go through. This is one of the toughest books. When I came to the, uh, to the Lord, uh, sometimes when I read uh, at in the beginning, you know, it was like, oh, it was too much. I couldn't understand. But uh, over the years, God has given me grace to understand a bit more. So, uh, so I'm look looking at Revelation. So if you could turn your Bibles to the book of Revelations. It's at the very end of the Bible, in case you're struggling to find it. Okay? So, how many of you like, you know, uh, you know someone, you know, uh, at least God, <coughs> giving you praise? How many of you like? Put your hands up. How many of you like, if God says, uh, I like this about you? Yeah? Then how many of you like if the Lord corrects you? Whom the Lord loves, he corrects. You can only correct people who are yours, like our children. You can't correct outsiders. Amen. So Lord corrects his children. Amen. And how many of you know that God likes to give you a warning? Son, daughter, there is electricity coming out of the plug socket. Don't put your fingers in there. That's good, isn't it? Anywhere you go, it says danger, warning. You know you need to be alert. So this book is a bit like that uh, in the, the beginning chapters. So it's giving you encouragement and then going into uh, 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 correction and then going into warning. Okay? Whom the Lord loves, he corrects. So don't be upset too much. Okay? <laughs> it's good for you. Good medicine. All right. So I'm going to talk about the uh, seven lampstands. Okay? So how many of you know what the lampstands are? What it stands for? Anyone in the congregation? Lampstands. Well done. Lampstands are the churches. Well, it's not too hard, is it? It gives away in the Bible when we read. It'll, it'll say the lampstands. You know, God is saying to John in uh, Patmos, where he's there, you know, uh, you know, giving him a revelation and says, Hey, uh, I'm going to give you a secret. I'm going to tell you something very important or mystery. And he's giving this mystery talking about the lampstand. And uh, before John could get confused, uh, he, he's saying, hey, the lampstands are the churches. How many churches? Seven churches. And he's talking about seven stars. Now, they, when I initially read the Bible, I really thought they were, okay, before that, what do you think the seven stars are? Angels. That's uh, correct. But they are actually named the messengers. Okay, so when I started studying deep into the word and, uh, you know, uh, reading some notes and, uh, you know, what others have spoken, uh, looking into that, it, it, it comes to... Uh, knowledge that these um, 
stars are actually messengers. That means people who proclaim the word, people who guide the church. Because it will be confusing if the Lord rebukes an angel. Or if the Lord, you know, yeah, because in the passage it says repent. You know, angels don't repent. <laughs> They're sent to hell or they stay with God. Yeah, so, so uh, and it also says in the passage below, it, it repent. So, uh, John is asked to write these things for the churches and also uh, the, the per people who are leading those churches. So it could be anyone who is leading a you know, group of believers. Uh, and in that's where you know, it's written. All right? Amen? Everyone with me? Okay, did I miss anything? All right. So I'm starting at verse 19. For time's sake, I didn't start from verse 1. Uh, Revelation. Write these things which you have seen. Amen. And the things which are and the things which will take place after this. The mysteries of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand. Now, these seven stars, where are they? It is in my right hand. The messengers are in God's right hand. So if you are leading a, a church or if you are leading a, a group of believers, uh, you, know, in, uh, you know, teaching and training and, you know, doing all that, you are in God's hand. Amen? You know, that's a good thing. Um, and the seven go golden lampstands. The seven stars are angels of the seven churches. Or the, another version uh, reads them as messengers. Angels are also called messengers. So, uh, you know, it, it derived from the same word. So, uh, we strongly believe that it is for the church leaders, seven uh, messengers. And the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. Amen. So that was very straightforward, nothing too complicated. Amen. So now he's going to go through the seven type of churches that, that is going to uh, be functioning in, our, uh, you know, in this world, all over the world. So God has categorized these churches. You know, there are going to be seven type of churches in this world, which is important. And if you're part of a church, it is, it's good to identify which church you belong to. <laughs> you know, it is not the denomination. Jesus is saying there are going to be seven types of churches. And if you, are, if you can identify yourself with one of these churches, then you, you, know, there is, you know, if there is something that you need to correct, you need to correct yourself. Amen? But remember, Jesus loves the church. Jesus is coming back for his church. Church is his bride. So he wants them, you know, fit for him. Amen? So he is telling them how they ought to be. Amen? All right. So let's read. Uh, let's start with... Um, I think it's chapter 2. It's called the loveless church. How many of you want to go to a loveless church? <laughs> there is no love. There is very seriousness. There is very rudeness. There is a lot of grumpy faces. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things say 
says, he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, so that's talking about Jesus, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. So God is saying, hey, I am walking in the midst of these churches. They are not outcast. There, he is walking in the midst of these churches. I know your works. Now, you need to pay notice. Pay attention to this word. Because he says, I know your works. Not, I know your denomination. Not, I know your <laughs> good dress, uh, well dressed and, you know, smart looking. I know your works. I know what you do. Your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have preserved and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. So he's giving them a praise report. How God is also agreeing with the things that they are doing, which is, you know, he is saying, hey, I'm with you on the all that, you know. Um, so then he's moving on to the next bit. I, you, um, uh, uh, verse 3, uh, chapter 2. And you have pr uh, preserved and have patience and have labored for my name's sake, and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. How many of you know when you receive God's love, you are full of his love, then you will begin to overflow of his love. Amen. So he, they have walked away from the first love, Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Remember this word. Repent. Jesus is saying, repent. You have all this good stuff you're doing, but you need to repent. You've fallen away from your first love. How many of you know what repent means? To turn around. You know, if you're going in one direction, hey, you need to take a U-turn and come back. Amen? Or change the way you think. Think differently. Amen? And, and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. So Jesus is saying, hey, if you don't repent, I will remove your lampstand. Lampstand is a symbol of light, you know, giving direction, giving light, and people, you know, begin to come to that light. When the lampstand is taken away, you know, people begin to drop. Numbers will begin to drop. There's no light, there's no direction, there's no focus. Amen? But this you have that you hate the deeds of the Nickelodeons, which I also hate. He who has ear and ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Amen. So he's going to, Give up, he's giving a promise. If you repent and come back, I will give, uh, for the overcomers, I will give to eat from the tree of life. Amen? Excellent. Now we uh, go on to the next church. I don't know how many of you identified the church you're going to with the first one. Okay. 
second one, verse 8, chapter 2. The persecuted church. I think this is one of the ch churches which didn't get a, a rebuke. So, and to the angel of the of the church in what is it? Smyrna. 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 Right. These things says the first and the last, who was dead and come to life, explaining about Jesus. I know your works. Again, the important word, I know your works. Tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which, are, which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you in prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation. Ten days. Be faithful until death. And I will give you the crown of life. Amen. So, here also, Jesus is saying, I know your works. And, you know, it is a persecuted church. They are going through so much suffering. And he's encouraging them, hey, stay focused and stay there. You know, there's going to be, you know, testing to your faith. But stay faithful until death. Amen. So he's uh, moving on to the next church. So I don't know how many of you identified with the faithful church. Okay, next one is. Uh, sorry, the uh, persecuted church. Yeah. Uh, 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 the third one, third church is the compromising church. Okay, compromising church. Verse twelve, and to the angel of the church in Pergamos. Pergamos, right? These things says he who has. The sharp two-edged sword, I know your works. Isn't it amazing? Everybody gets told, I know your works. Jesus is not sitting there and dreaming. He's definitely focused on your works as a church. And where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and you hold fast to my name, and did not deny my faith, even in the days in which Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was killed among you, where Satan dwells. So he's saying, hey, well done, church. You guys are so great. You know, uh, you've been, you know, actually living in the heart of all wickedness and, you know, all, uh, you know, devil and the demonic activities you know, really strong, and you know, he's telling, uh, "Well done, you know, you you done well." But I have a few things against you, because you have there are those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality, those you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicodonians, which things I hate. Important word, repent. So these are the things, you know, they're brought in, you know, uh, doctrine of Balaam and Balak. Repent, or else I will come to you quickly, and I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the uh, Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes. So if you repent, and if you overcome, I will give some of the hidden manna. 
foul, hidden manna. And I will give him a white stone and on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who received it. Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. Hidden manna, a, a white stone, and a new name. Amen. Him who overcomes. Right, the next church. I don't know how many of you identified with the compromising church. And next one is the corrupt church. Oh my gosh. Can you believe Jesus has identified these churches? Okay, so we need to be careful. We need to check our churches. <laughs> the corrupt church. And to the angel of the church in Tyre write, These things says the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire, and his feet like fine brass. I know your works. Again, love, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. So they got the order wrong, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman, Jezebel, who calls herself prophetess, to teach and you seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and to eat things sacrificed to idols. And I give her time to repent of her sexual immorality. And she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into the sick bed and those who commit adultery with her into the great tribulation unless they repent. So there is a church which is going to be controlled by the spirit of Jezebel. You know, although they've got all the uh, good things happening there, but they've been seduced by this spirit called Jezebel and uh, having, you know, uh, you know, teaching and, you know, seducing uh, the, the servants. Okay? So we need to be careful. Unless you repent of their deeds, I will kill her children with death. So if there is no repentance from this, uh, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, influence, you know, there is, you know, it says death for her children. And all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and the heart. And I will give to each one according to your works. So Jesus is saying, I search your mind and your heart. So this particular church, they need to search their mind and their heart. Is there any, you know, uh, 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 you know, a, a anything which is uh, deceptive, you know, that they are, you know, doing, you know? Uh, is there anything that they are compromising? Amen? Right. Where are we? Oh, sorry, that's the color of church, yeah. Mm. Uh, verse 24. Now uh, to you I say and to the rest in uh, Thyatria, Thyatria, as many as do not have this doctrine who have not known the depths of Satan, as they say, I will put on you no other burden, but hold fast to you have till I come. But hold fast what you have till I come. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give the power over nations. Isn't that awesome? You know, for the church that overcomes the spirit, power over nations. There will be a great influencer, you know, uh, influencing church. That means, you know, they will have, you know, what they say will influence that nation. 
So, you know. Verse 27. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessels. I also have received from my father and I will give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. So if it's a corrupt church uh, that you can identify, you need to repent. Amen. All right. Next one. Jesus is saying there is another church called the dead church. It is so sad. It's called the dead church. And to the angel of the church in Sardis write, these things says he who has seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works again. That you have a name that you are alive. That em everyone you know, talks that you are alive. But you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before God. So your works are not perfect. Dead church. He's saying, hey, the little things which are alive, you know, barely alive, make sure, strengthen them. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. The word repent again. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. You have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments. They shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments. So overcomers get to wear the holy white garments. And I will not, uh, uh, I will not blot out his name from the book of life. So your name remains in the book of life. But I will... Uh, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. So they will know you, basically, in heaven. Amen? Right. Then the next one. The faithful church. This church doesn't have the word repent. <laughs> so it might be a good church. <laughs> okay, please follow on. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right? These things say, says, he who is holy, he, is, he who is true, he who is, has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts. And shuts and no one opens. I know your works. Again, the word, I know your works. He's looking for works. See, I have not set before you an open door. See, I have set before you an open door. Sorry, And no one can shut it. For you have a little strength. Have kept my word. Kept my word. Important. And have not denied my name. Not denied his name. Indeed. I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who says they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet. For the faithful church. Jesus is saying, these guys, you know, be, uh, worshippers of Satan, are going to come and fall at your feet and worship you. And I know that I have loved you because you have kept my command to preserve. I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world. Hey, you want to escape 
from the hour of trial which is coming upon the whole world be the faithful church. To test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have that no one may take your crown. Hold fast to what you have, he's saying. Don't let it go. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city to my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of the heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. Amen. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. We go, last one. The lukewarm church. And to the angel of the church of the Laodicean, write. Okay, these things says the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works. You are, uh, th that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because of y you are lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know. See, the wealth has made them become lukewarm. Because you say I am rich, have become wealthy, and have ne uh, need of nothing. And do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you, uh, counsel you to buy from me gold ref refined in the fire. Amen. That you may be rich with white garments. That you may be clothed. That the shame of your nakedness may be may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye selves that you may see as may as I love I rebuke and chasten uh, sorry as many as I love there, this is where he's Jesus saying if I'm loving you I'm going to rebuke you and chasten you be therefore be zealous And repent the word, repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, again the promise, I will grant to, s I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcome and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. So we're going to end the reading there. So, uh, you know, just uh, uh, want to recap. Jesus is looking for works of the church. You know? Not what is preached on the church, not what is said in the church, but your works. You know, preaching should create an action. You know, if there is no action, there is no works happening from whatever you say, then it's, it's pointless. So God is searching for that works from the church. Each church is given something. Okay? Amen? Five times he says works. And I think five times he says repent for the churches.
So God is giving all the good stuff, so you know you can pick up all the good stuff they are doing. You know, if you need to be corrected, you you know correct, and you know you have to take all of the warning. If not, you know, if you don't repent, what will happen? Amen. And of course, for the overcomers, there is a promise. You know, without repenting, promise doesn't work. Without overcoming, <laughs> your promise is not through yet. Hallelujah. All right. So there we end. Well, thank you each and everyone for joining us today. I hope you could identify which church you belong to and, you know, you can take the necessary steps to repent and turn around and, you know, uh, stay focused. Remember, Jesus loves the church. What he loves, he wants to correct. So you can be, you can, uh, you know, you can become overcomers and, you know, get, get those promises, what is said before you. Amen.